and for graduate diploma level seven at MIT. As per the rules, I'll get three year open uh, visa. So in those three years, if I don't get PR, then do I want to go back to India or is there any chance for continuing working here without PR like any work visa? I think it's a good question. I think uh, yesterday I already made a, a, a very uh, elaborate uh, 10 or 11 minute video and put it out there explaining what are the different uh, uh, changes that are happening. First and foremost, most of the international students who are present in New Zealand uh, who graduate after 26th November, uh, that is the applicable date, uh, that is the 26th of November 2018 is when uh, most of these uh, rule changes are going to occur. So if there are students currently in New Zealand studying a two-year course between level four and six uh, or studying a one-year course from level seven, eight, nine, ten onwards, most of you, I think, uh, are going to get a three-year work visa, which I think is phenomenal. And uh, to already answer a question of some other uh, uh, students who are here with their spouses and wondering, oh, but what will happen to my spouse once you get the work visa by default the spouse would also be able to uh, get uh, not by default like an you know the, it's guaranteed but the fact is you've already been granted a partnership based work visa so the spouse would also be able to get a partnership based work visa so, so there's not much of a problem there but coming back to Arvind's question which is very good he's saying yeah he's aware already that he's going to get a three years work visa which is brilliant Arvind congratulations because when you applied for your visa the rule was that you were only going to get a one-year post-study work, uh, work visa. But now, obviously, with the new uh, change in policy, you are going to be eligible for a three years uh, post-study work visa. And your question is, after those three years, if I'm still not able to get a job, do I have to go back to India? I mean, the answer pretty much is yes. Because if you are completing a course from a very good institution in New Zealand, like MIT, which is Monica Institute of Technology, and you're studying in... Um, you know, a skill shortage area, and you have three years of work visa with no strings attached, no pressure from an employer saying you have to stick with me only, so on and so forth, you will need to work your way to a position of either getting to a bracket of $42,952. If you are able to reach that $42,952 uh, as your salary, and if the employer is able to prove that there were no other New Zealanders available for this position, then you could apply for something called the essential skills work visa, which is normally for another further three years. Or if you are able to get to a, a figure of $50,523 as your salary in these three years, then you can very well go straight forward uh, for your resident visa application, uh, which is where, you know, you can, there is no not a, number of years attached to it and you can kind of uh, go on uh, and stay uh, reside in New Zealand. So that's right. I mean, in these three years, the, the responsibility is on you. The pressure is on you to ensure that you get to one of these salary thresholds, either the $42,952 threshold to be able to get an essential skills work visa and then further get a, a three years uh, work visa. Uh, as long as your employer can prove that there were no uh, local residents or citizens available or go up to $50,523 and just go for straight for the resident visa. So that's the way it's got to uh, it's going to be working, guys. So in three years, if you're still not able to reach that point, maybe you need to look at yourself and kind of say, you know, do, what is that about my attitude, knowledge or skills that's not helping me to get to that point? So it's going to be a challenge. It will not be uh, an easy, uh, straightforward journey to 42,952 or 50,523. But hey, look, you have three whole years to achieve that.